California, the home to Disneyland. And for right now, the Los Angeles Rams, as Fox Television Sports welcomes you to Anaheim Stadium. And today, the three and two New York Giants will take on the two and four Los Angeles Rams. Hi, everyone, along with former NFL playoff coach Jerry Glanville, Kevin Harlan, welcome to Southern California. The Rams have lost two in a row. The New York Giants have lost two consecutive games. And, Jerry, I can't help but think that today Rodney Hampton, a healthy Rodney Hampton, will go a long way to helping out the Giant offense. The Giant offense has been struggling with Rodney Hampton injured. Now, he played last week, but it wasn't the Rodney Hampton that the New York fans usually see. He struggled. He didn't have his yards per carry. But the Rodney Hampton this week, the offensive line said he moved his feet. He had good vision. He could see what was going on, and they think the real Rodney Hampton will be back for the Rams. Well, they're trying to get his rhythm back, of course, his uh, running back rhythm, which is so very important for him to get to where he wants to be as the key to the offense for the New York Giants. Now for the Los Angeles Rams, here is a team that today will be playing without their finest defensive player and that interior defensive line, Sean Gilbert. Sean Gilbert is not only the Rams' best defensive player, he's one of the top defensive players in the National Football League. The way he plays, he helps the linebackers and he helps the secondary with the pass rush. Now, he has been replaced by a rookie free agent, DeMarco Farr. Here's a guy that's undersized, wasn't drafted, but has a big heart. All week, he's been saying, I'm going to prove that I can play in the National Football League. The New York Giants won the toss. They will receive here at Anaheim today. A perfect day for football. Tony Zendejas, who has played so many years in the National Football League. He, of course, had most of his success with the Houston Oilers. Will kick off and deep back David Meggett along with Thomas Lewis, the explosive rookie from Indiana. They think this kid is really going to be something special. The wind is not much of a factor today, uh, but it is blowing, I think, somewhat surprisingly. And so uh, it may, as the game progresses, have some kind of factor on the outcome between the Rams and the New York Giants, and we are underway. And make it into the sun from the four-yard line. By the 20, and still on his feet, staggering out to the 26-yard line, the tackle made by the former Kansas City Chief, Chris Martin. Dave Brown is the quarterback for the New York Giants, coming off a tough outing against the Minnesota Vikings uh, this past Monday with three interceptions. And he is taking the place of Phil Sims on their offensive line. They weigh an average of 300 pounds, so we know they can eat, but can they block and protect the quarterback today? Smith, the one to watch at the right guard. Hampton and Rashid in the backfield. Sherrard and Callaway, the receivers. And the tight end is Howard Cross. It's first down and 10 for Brown of the New York Giants. Rodney Hampton. Nothing there. Middle linebacker Shane Conlon, number 56, makes the stop for Los Angeles. The Rams, as we said, without their starter, Sean Gilbert, so the rookie free agent DeMarco Farr. Flanked by Stokes, Jones, and Robert Young, a great player you probably haven't heard of, number 76. In the linebacking core, Raman Pfeiffer, Shane Conlon just made the stop, and the outside linebacker Joe Kelly. The secondary led by Todd Light from Notre Dame with Marquez, Pope Anthony Newman, and Daryl Henry. Second down and 10, and again, they go to Hampton. And he bangs his way out to the 31-yard line. Daryl Henley is right there, a pickup of five on the play. And Dan Reeves is the head coach for the New York Giants. Dan really believes he has to be able to run the football. He doesn't believe the passing game yet can carry the Giants, and the defense is too young to carry him. So he got to be able to run the ball. And being in Giants Stadium in December, the win, he said, is as bad as it is anywhere. Third down and five now for Dave Brown. Giants began the season 3-0, have lost their last two. He's got a third and five, and he's got his receiver in motion. Brown is sacked on the play by number 60, Fred Stokes, the former Washington Redskin. Played it real conservative. He had the uh, wide receiver in the backfield, the Giants did, and they sent him in motion to build a slot out of the backfield rather than line up into it. But the, uh, the Rams were up to that adjustment and had everything covered. The quarterback was smart. Don't throw it. Don't get in trouble. Mike Horan is at a couple horrendous weeks punting for the New York Giants. We'll get his first attempt today as Johnny Bailey awaits. Back at the Los Angeles 30-yard line. High hanging punt and a beauty by Horan. And Bailey back to his own 22. 
Johnny Bailey to the 29-yard line, tackled by Brian Kozlowski. That's a punt of 51 yards and a return of seven. And here's Chris Miller, the $9 million three-year quarterback who comes over as an unrestricted free agent from the Atlanta Falcons. And on that line, you saw how they begin the season. Jones, Loniker, Rostick, Goez, and Slater. But today, they've got problems. Three new starters, Bellin at the left guard, Newberry moves over from guard, and the rookie out of Auburn, Wayne Gandy at the right tackle. Rams have a first down and 10. Bettis and Griffith in the backfield. And Miller to go right to work. He escapes one, and he gets it out to Howard Griffith. He is a second-year player from Illinois. Felipe Sparks makes the tackle. Now for the Los Angeles running backs and wide receivers. We told you that Bettis will be starting in the backfield. Lester will see a lot of time today. Willie Flipper Anderson and Jesse Hester, the wide receivers, and Troy Dayton, who caught two touchdown passes last week against Green Bay at the tight end position. Chuck Knox, the coach of the Los Angeles Rams. He said they wanted to throw on first and ten, take some pressure off of the running backs, and then put that ball up on a first and ten situation just the way they started. Second down and ten. Second throw for Miller. And out of the reach of Jerome Bettis, the leading rusher for the Los Angeles Rams. Bettis will have all the attention of the New York defense today, shifting to a 43 Defensive look, a full-time allotment now with Strahan, Howard, Mike Fox, and Keith Hamilton. The linebacking core, a couple of Corys, Miller and Widmer, Michael Brooks, the best defensive player for the New York Giants. And in the secondary, Raymond Campbell, Williams, and Felipe Sparks, who made the tackle earlier. And uh, the interesting thing about this secondary, three-quarters of it gone from a season ago. Now it's third down and ten from the shotgun. They've got Chris Miller. And he's brought down, sacked by Michael Strahan, his second sack of the season. A little changeup for the Giants. They're usually a zone team, and it was a third and ten, and they came in and played man-to-man -man with a robber inside. One of the safeties ran down, and they had a safety in the post and a safety shallow. Everybody else was man-to-man, -man, even on the picking routes. So now for the New York Giant defense is Sean Landetta, the former Giant. will be punting to David Maggott. The Giant defense now goes 28 consecutive games without the opposing team getting a touchdown on the opening drive of the game. Landetta, third in NFC punting. And Megan on the 24. David Megan has room by the 40. He's out to the 48-yard line and tackled by Keith Lyle. A punt of 50 yards, a return of 24 for maybe the MVP of the New York Giants in the first three games of the season. Both teams have been at once. Both have punted. No score, the Giants and the Rams. Back in Anaheim, Anaheim Stadium. Giants hoping not to get cooked today like they're doing out there in the tailgate parties outside the stadium. First down and 10. Good field for getting field position from a 48-yard line. Rodney Hampton gets the call. He moves a pile out to midfield. Fred Stokes makes the stop gain of a handful on the play. And the Los Angeles Rams coming in today 2-4, and four, losing their last two and led by their coach now in his third year here, Chuck Knox. Chuck's a little bit worried about the penalties. His offensive line has had 23 penalties, so he's had two officials at every practice trying to get away from being the penalized team that he does not want to be. Knox, the second winningest active coach in the National Football League. Couple tight ends, second down and eight. And Brown to throw it. It's intercepted. Picked off on the play by Joe Kelly. If he gets a block, he's in. Tackled by Dave Brown. Good job of covering a bad throw. Dave Brown has now thrown four interceptions in the last two games, six in the last three, and a costly one early to the Los Angeles Rams and linebacker Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly, very smart linebacker, and they're in the zone. The backers are dropping. And it, he just threw a bad play, threw it out too far. 
Kelly should have stayed on the sideline, should have stayed running on the sideline. Here's a look. He's going after his H-back, Aaron Pierce. And they had him combinate. They had a combination coverage on him. Had two linebackers inside and outside on the man he threw it to. Now let's see if the Los Angeles Rams can capitalize. First down and 10 from the New York Giant 21. And Jerome Bettis gets the call. Tumbling down to the 18, picking up three. Chopped down by middle linebacker Carlton Bailey. Trying to lead up through there on a first and 10. They got to get the ball in Bettis' hands. He's the key to them. He's limping a little bit there. Looks like got banged pretty good on the knee or the leg. Jerry, today, Bettis goes against the number four rushing defense in the NFL, the New York Giants. The Giants have always been strong against the rush, a good tradition. Struggling a little bit in the secondary with three new players against the pass. Second down and eight. And Miller with some escort help. Troy Drayton, the tight end. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass to the tight end, Troy Drake. We had a play-action pass with the Rams out of a split. And it was incomplete. Brings up third down. And then the tight end snuck all the way across the field for a tight end screen away from where it looked like they were going to run the football. Nice design, but the ball hit the ground, made it an incomplete catch. Chris Miller has started 0-3 for the Los Angeles Rams. You had him down in Atlanta. He did a good job one year. You know, we won about 11 games with him, ended up in the Pro Bowl. He's very accurate on the deep ball. Four wide receivers, six defensive backs. Miller, touchdown. Rookie Isaac Bruce, his second touchdown of the season. He saw the wide receiver breaking for an inside slant, and we just said he had great accuracy on deep throws, stuck the ball right in there. Bailey was in the backfield on a close over. He was also open. His first choice was deep. If that would have been covered, he'd have hit Bailey coming underneath the secondary. Zendayas for the extra point on the hole for Chris Champ. Seven nothing, Los Angeles Rams. The rookie from Memphis State, Isaac Bruce, lassoing the touchdown pass from quarterback Chris Miller, and the interception of Dave Brown set it up for Ram quarterback Chris Miller. Seven nothing, Los Angeles. Dave Brown's interception for the New York Giants set up a good field position from the 21-yard line for Chris Miller and the Los Angeles Rams. And the man you just saw, Isaac Bruce, a rookie out of Memphis State, caught the touchdown pass. And the Rams kicking off with Tony Zendeja. 7-0 Los Angeles. The Rams have lost two in a row, and the New York Giants have lost two in a row. Be back, David Megan, along with Thomas Lewis. And Thomas Lewis on the fly from the 15. And he was submarined at the 29-yard line. Giants will get it for a third time today. What you'll see today, this is Hester. Hester's going to come and tie up the safety, Booty. And Booty then cannot come over and help the corner. So our left corner here, if you're a Giant fan, ends up all alone. He's looking for inside help. The safety's late. Easy pickings. Good job by Hester tying up the help that he could have got from Booty. And a nice throw from Chris Miller. He, he's accurate deep, always has been. Giants with a couple tight ends on first and ten. And the handoff to Rodney Hampton. Hampton out to the 38-yard line. Right now, we're going to hand it off for our McDonald's game break to our studio host in Hollywood, James Brown. James, good afternoon. Arizona looking for another win and a tough place, too, at RFK. Second down and one. Hampton gets the call. And Hampton's got the first down. Rodney Hampton. 
He had 41 carries a year ago against the Rams and a Giants win at Giant Stadium. How important, Jerry, will he be today in rediscovering this running game that I guess what the Giants offense is basically built around? The Giants offense has slid all the way to the bottom of the league, which last year they were so effective at running, and they're switching personnel. Last down, they had two tight ends. Now they have uh, one tight end in the backfield. On first and 10, Rodney Hampton to the 48. And Joe Kelly, who had the interception earlier, his first interception since 86, makes the stop. If you look at this chart, you'll see what happened against the Saints and what happened against the Vikings. 50 yards and 37 is not enough. You can't win till you get back up here with attempts and yardage. That's the first time under Dan Reeves they've had two below 100-yard games back-to-back. -back. Second down, five to go. Callaway is number 80. Rodney Hampton. Hit by middle linebacker Shane Conlon. Shane Conlon probably having his finest year. We talked to him uh, Saturday and, and said, when you were with Buffalo, you never looked as good as you look now. He says that he's healthy and he gets to play on grass. And that's why he likes being out there and he's in a true 4-3 where he gets to play middle linebacker. Yeah, he said that was a real big determining factor. In fact, he could play a full-time middle linebacker. In uh, Buffalo, as you know, they're in that 3-4, and they slide it up and down. He was never the true middle linebacker that he wanted to be. Brown now from the gun, third down and four. Pittsburgh with the win over Cincinnati and Philadelphia with an early lead on Dallas. Hit as he threw, and the pass is dropped. Arthur Marshall, the former Denver Bronco, with Dan Reeves in the Mile High City with the drop and another punt coming up for the New York Giants. Dave Brown was trying to read the coverage. He bobbled the snap a little bit out of the shotgun, but a good sidearm throw, you got to catch that ball. That there keeps the drive alive, makes your quarterback feel good. He gets to get in some rhythm. You drop the ball, you mess up the quarterback. Second punt in three possessions for the New York Giants. Mike Curran, a nice boot to Johnny Bailey the first time. The same twosome out there now. I think I drafted Mike Curran somewhere. Somewhere in my lifetime, he was punting <laughs> for us. But I think I got rid of him wherever we were. Knuckleball. Todd Kinchin will chase it. Out of bounds at about the six. And we told you that Horan is coming off a 34-yard average against the Vikings on Monday. That punt goes 45. The previous one, 51. He's had a good day so far. A Brown interception for the Giants. Picked off by Ram linebacker Joe Kelly. Couple plays later, the Rams had a touchdown pass. They have the lead. In today's politically correct world, George Carlin is one guy who's not afraid to tell it like it is. Catch the season premiere of the George Carlin Show tonight at 9.30, 830 Central, right after Married with Children. They're on the Fox Television Network. With Jerry Glanville, Kevin Harlan from Anaheim, California. A new series for the Rams who lead 7-0, but back stranded at their own six. And Jerome Bettis takes it up the middle and taking it from us right now in Hollywood, James Brown. James? Thank you, James. Two four and one ball clubs down at Texas today. Second down and ten for the Los Angeles Rams. Bettis and Griffith in the backfield. Zeroing in. Carlton Bailey 54. Nice play action by Miller. Outside to Howard Griffith. Near the 15-yard line. And now that Ram offense, Jerry working with a reshuffled offensive line. What kind of effects do you think we'll see throughout the afternoon? He wanted to take some pressure off all the reshuffling by throwing on first down and, and uh, taking some pressure off the just running the one back, just beating Bettis to death. So that's really what the plan was coming in here. That play action pass proved that it uh, looked like uh, Howard Griffin came out early. He was wide open, nobody near him. Four wide receivers now for the Los Angeles Rams. And they put Bailey in the backfield when there's four wide receivers. Third down and three. Miller from the gun. 
Pass is dropped by Isaac Bruce. He just caught the touchdown pass covered by the rookie from Kansas State, number 23, Thomas Randolph. What the Giants are doing versus Red. Red is four wide receivers. They're playing man-to-man -man with a free safety deep and another man in the middle to help on inside cuts. That's And the receiver felt that pressure coming from the free man, the safety that ran down inside and drops the football. Rams with their second punch in three possessions. And Lendetta had a good punt on the last one. Good hang time. Last week, his punts didn't go any higher than my head. And this first punt he had, had a little hang time on it. High punt. Make it from the 36. And he got a block, and he's got some room. David Megan still on his feet for the Los Angeles 46-yard line. Last time, the Giants began at their own 48, this time at their own 46. That was a 50-yard punt by the former Giant, Sean Landetta. Mega doing a great job bringing the ball back. If you're the Rams on the sideline, you've got to make a correction on your punt coverage. We know he's a great returner. He's my favorite guy bringing the punts back. But you still got to, you got to flare out and you got to cover this man. Folks, next week, Fox NFL Sunday begins at noon. Eastern, 9 Pacific, with the one-hour pregame show, then except in the New York and San Diego areas. It's Chicago at Detroit or the Rams at New Orleans. The second half of our doubleheader features Dallas at Arizona, Atlanta at the Raiders, or Tampa at San Francisco. Check the game and tie in your area. First down and 10. Two tight ends in there, Kevin. Little play action by Dave Brown. Rodney Hampton. To the 40 and a pickup of seven on the play and the tackle made by Conlin and helped by Roman Pfeiffer. Good job by Dave Brown. He's thrown an interception. He ought to be rattled, but that's not his temperament. You'll watch. You'll watch everybody. The tight end. He looked both places. Everybody's covered, and he has the presence to sit here. A little fake. Everybody's covered. He doesn't like it. Hits the flare. Hits the safety valve. After his first completion, Brown hands off to Hampton, who's got the first down inside the Los Angeles Ram 35-yard line. Brian now, Williams, the center, with a nice block up front. Rodney Hampton looked quick on that one, Kevin. We hadn't seen that out of him. He's back. I think he is 100%. Didn't he dart up in there good? Very, very quick. And you know, Jerry, it, it's tough for a running back, as we mentioned in the open, to regain his rhythm after he's been out a couple games like Hampton. Has. You sit out and you watch and you, and you just lose that. We think he's healthy this time. First down and 10. Pierce is 84. Kelsey, Kelsey. First down. Brown had it knocked away by Robert Young, the left end. Knocking the ball away probably helped. What's happened to, to Dave Brown is the secondaries are squatting. They're not playing anything as a deep route. And that corner was sitting down in there. Todd Light, if he'd have thrown that ball good, Todd maybe would have had that thing. Jerry, Dave Brown was battling with Kent Graham in the preseason after two games. They gave the starting job to Brown. Is he the right guy, you think, for this offense? When you interview and you sit and you talk to him, you got to believe he is. What's inside the guy is super. He takes the blame for a loss. He knows he's got to get better. And I think he's going to be a real good quarterback. But right now, people are squatting on him. Los Angeles Rams holding on to a 7-0 lead over the New York Giants here in Anaheim today. Chris Miller touchdown pass has given the Rams a 7-0 lead here early in the game from Anaheim, California. An interception by the Rams off of Dave Brown. Set it up. Now he's got a second down and 10. Brown does at the Los Angeles Rams 35-yard line. Look out for the blitz. They hold back. But Rodney Hampton takes it up the middle. And he's down to the 26-yard line. For everybody in New York watching this, this is on natural grass, and look how quick Rodney Hampton looks. I'm standing up here way up on the top of the stadium at about the 45-yard line, but it looks like an AstroTurf cut. He's moving quick, and he's back to being healthy. Nine carries and 40 yards today. Back to fundamentals is what Dan Reeves told us yesterday. They want to simplify this offense just a bit, get back to running the ball. They got a third down and two right now. Rodney Hampton first down. Rodney Hampton touchdown. Twenty-seven yard touchdown by number twenty-seven. Rodney Hampton. Todd Light gave up chasing him, turned around, 
pulled his headgear off and ran back to the coaches. I don't think he liked the defensive call. I've never had a defensive player quit chasing the guy for the touchdown and come running after me. Lord knows we all make bad calls. You got to go chase that man. Dive, leap, do anything. Try to get him on the ground. Hampton doesn't have a lot of long runs, as you just saw, but that one came at a great time for Dan Reeves and his young quarterback, Dave Brown. 471 carries, and that's the longest one he's had, over 20 yards. The extra point is up and in by David Treadwell. Rodney Hampton with his third touchdown of the season. Watch this guard. He's going to come out and pull. If you get a chance, get a good look at Todd Light. He quits chasing the man. We got a kick out. We got a lead back, fullback gets a bump. Watch, watch him, watch him right here. Keep chasing, dive. Try. Now he takes his helmet off and he runs back to the coach. <laughs> There's got to be a fight on the sideline and we're going to get killed here. <laughs> we said he looked quick, said he looked fast. He's turning it on, riding his back. New York can have a party. Chase him, dive, jump on him. Giants already have, Jerry. Late in the first quarter, 66 yards rushing. Most of it attributable to Rodney Hampton. And we said the games they did not win, they didn't even rush for 50 yards. And you can't win in the National Football League. That put them right back in the game. That lets the quarterback come back. Chuck's looking around wondering, where was the defense? How did he sneak up through there? You get in that third one, you get in that short yardage. And if you pop it, it's easy to take it the distance. You mentioned in your open that their best defensive player, Sean Gilbert, was out. Are they going at that rookie free agent to Marco Farr from what you can see early in the that game? That play there was not, but they have jumped on him early. They ran the first couple plays his way, and surprisingly, they doubled him. They had William Roberts, the guard, and Brian Williams, the center. They doubled him and banged him around a little bit. Looked like a little bit like a window shade flapping around in there. But since that time, he's sitting in there. You don't have to worry about what's inside DeMarco. He'll fight him. He's got the spirit. He says he's carrying the torch. So on the Giants' longest run of the season, they've come back to tie it. Todd Kinchin from LSU from the five. Wrapped up and brought down. Tackle made by linebacker Corey Whitmer. He's a starter, but has stayed on those special teams, and he'll get back in his 43 defensive alignment. There's their number one cover guy. He's running hard. Corey Whitmore, he's got his head up, got the, the collar around his neck. Now he throttles down. Nobody blocks him, sift his way through. He got a freebie, no contact. Now how does Los Angeles respond? And again, quarterback Chris Miller from his own 26 first and 10. They respond with Jerome Bettis. Behind that reshuffled line, he digs his way for four, maybe three and a half near the 29, and Eric Howard, who is a starter at that right tackle, makes the stop. If you're on the Rams coaching staff, Kevin, and you just had something bad happen to you, the best thing to try to fix it is give it to your best football player. Let Jerome get up through there, although he doesn't look like he's got that quickness right now. Second down and seven. Play action by Chris Miller. Dumps it off, screen pass, first down, Jerome Bettis. Jerome Bettis on his feet to midfield. Jerome Bettis down the sideline, inside the New York Giant 35. There's a flag, chased down by outside linebacker Corey Miller. That's a gain of 34 yards. That's how the Rams respond to the New York Giant touchdown. Penalty on the play on the New York Giants. Face mask by the defense number 57. Five yard penalty only. Enforced from the end of the run. First down. Corey Miller is guilty. He's got him there. Let it go. Don't hang on that long, darling. Did he get a five or a 15, Kevin? You know what? I was looking at a note. Five, five yard yarder. Penalty. Five yard penalty inside the 35 on a career long run by Jerome Bettis of 34 yards. Bettis now lines up by himself, and they got the three wideouts from the Giant 32. 84 straight. And a 
again, Jerome Bettis. A gain of about seven. Tackled by Keith Hamilton and Jarvis Williams, the former Miami Dolphin. The different types of personnel they're putting in the game are trying to stop the Giants from building an eight-man front. So they got the three wideouts. He, they're all going to pull. The wideout came, and he's coming with them. Very on you. They're bringing everybody through that, that inside trap hole. They not only brought the guard and tackle, they brought the man in motion to lead up through there. 243 pounds of Jerome Bettis. Pretty nimble, I'd say, for a guy that size. He is a halfback, and they, they moved him to halfback. He really was a, you know, a linebacker in, uh, in high school. Seven down and four. And no other throw. Now a little freelance. He's got the first down. And he's all the way down to the 15 of the New York Giants. We'll go all the way out to Hollywood, and here's James Brown. James? Raiders are slipping it back at Kansas City and San Diego in that AFC West. Chris Miller ran on that. He's, he told us yesterday in the meeting for the first time he feels athletic. His feet, his legs, everything feels good. He looked like an athlete running on that play. He did indeed. First down and ten. And here's Jerome Bettis. And he squeaks through a small hole and plies his way down to the 12. And Mike Fox greets him there for the Giants. A lead play. The fullback going up first. Jerome Bettis. Didn't look quick, didn't look fast, but everything moves. People are hanging on him, the pile's moving, and he picks up yardage. A guy that would not go to Michigan because Michigan wanted him to be a linebacker. He wanted to play running back. That's why he went to Notre Dame. Jerome Bettis from Detroit, Michigan. Second down and seven. After a long look, Miller to the end zone. Touchdown! Troy Drayton, the tight end. He caught two touchdowns last week in Green Bay. He just gave the Rams a lead with a touchdown there, beating Jesse Campbell. Jarvis Williams, the safety. They were playing four deep, where the safeties had the inside cuts of the, of the second receiver, who, who uh, Troy was. It looked to me like Jarvis hung outside of him. You got to get inside of him in on the goal line. Looked to me like Jarvis Williams was out of position. Fourth touchdown reception of the season for Troy Drake. Walk on at Penn State. Here's the extra point now by Tony Zendejas. And the Rams have a touchdown lead over the New York Giants. Troy Drake makes the catch. The second touchdown pass today by Chris Miller. Here's the safety. They're playing four deep. He's got to be inside the second man. The tight end is running outside. Look at the safety sitting two wide two. Get inside. Get inside. Too late, darling. Touchdown. There's Miller looking right at the safety. Throws it to the inside of Troy. The safety's to the right. Come running. Come help that linebacker. Too late. And for an offensive line, Jerry, that is sporting three new starters today, Miller has had time to throw. Multiple formations. Gets back to what we would call red, white, and blue. That's three different types of personnel. The Giants see a different collection of people. They see four wides, one down. The next down, they see three wides. The next down, they see two tight ends. That's what's going on. We talked about Dave Brown over with the New York Giants. Chris Miller and Chris Chandler are in kind of a little controversy here as well, aren't they? the quarterback position when Chris Miller uh, you know he got injured and he missed some games and Chandler came in and played excellent one football games for the Rams then he got injured so really they have two good quarterbacks if they got one healthy all the time they have a chance to play Ford is out here the Knox may favor Chandler he even said that uh, you know after Chandler went on and won a football game what happens to all head coaches the guy that just won the last game that's your favorite guy ordinarily unless you're coaching in Chicago <laughs> There's David Meggett waiting for this kickoff from Tony Zendejas. Down by seven. Here come the New York Giants and Thomas Lewis in front of Meggett at the 11-yard line. And he's out to the 23-yard line. Thomas Lewis caught that kickoff 
and it looked like he wanted to hand it off. He looked around to see where Meggett was. Meggett's the return guy. He's the guy that can win. He catches the ball, and he looks around and says, I got the ball. It's my turn. Watch him catch it. Meggett's right there. Probably made the call. He looks around. I got it. Here we go. And finally hauled down by number 22, Marquez Pope, the former San Diego Charger. And they're out there talking now. Meggett, Thomas Lewis. Here comes Dave Brown. Had a touchdown drive the last time out there. Trying to run the ball as the numbers would dictate. Callaway is number 80. And Rodney Hampton gets the pitch. Nice move by Hampton. DeMarco Farr had the first hit and knocked him off stride. He had to make a good twist and a good turn just to get back to the line of scrimmage and then ran with power up inside. Here's the toss sweep. Everybody pulling, everybody coming. Good spin to come back inside. Second down and eight, and the Giants at their own 25. And the tight end, Howard Cross. And he's out to the 31-yard line. And our first quarter clock is ticking down. It stopped there. Indeed, it did at 19 seconds. Giants today thought they had to do better things on first and second down. And Jerry, Dan Reeves told us yesterday they cannot rely on the pass yet. This is an offense that still has got to run the ball. The thing that really hit me, he said they ought to take Phil Sims right now and enshrine him in the Hall of Fame because of the win that's in the Giants Stadium in November and December. He said, you can't count on throwing the football for a living there. And I thought that was a nice compliment for Sims. The New York Giants had not allowed a first quarter touchdown for the last nine games. Today, they've allowed two in the first quarter. And the Rams on top, 14 to 7. Chris Miller, the Ram quarterback, has had two touchdown passes. The Giants have had a 27-yard touchdown run. And we've had an explosive first quarter from Anaheim Stadium. Let's go jerking back on the sideline for the Los Angeles Rams, who have a seven-point lead over the New York Giants, who have it third down now. And two yards to go, and the ball at their own 32-yard line. Four receivers in from the shotgun. David Brown. He's got the rookie, Lewis. He's got a first down. Just the necessary yard to the 37-yard line hauled down by Wyman Henderson. Easy route, easy throw. Just break the out. Go to the flat. Uh, Dave Brown was in the shotgun when we talked with him yesterday. A great kid to talk to. And, and you could you could tell he likes the shotgun. He wants to be in the shotgun. What about his resiliency, Jerry? Did you get a sense of that talking to him yesterday? Well, he said one thing. It took Joe Namath a long time to learn. Don't read the newspapers. Don't read what they write about you. A little full house backfield. Matt Calloway coming out of it. Rodney Hampton. No gain on the play. DeMarco Farr, the what? rookie free agent, filling in for the best defensive player, Sean Gilbert, with a tackle. Here's a guy that wants to prove to everybody he can play. Number 75. You'll see him right here. People thought he was 5'10". He says, I'm 6'1". I can play. Got a double team on him and an all-out effort guy. When you sit and talk to did you love this guy? Did you love this guy? He's a good man. He said he's carrying the torch for his high school. Kennedy High School has pro football players. He says, I have the torch. Second down and 12. And again, the Ram defense stacks up Rodney Hampton. Pfeiffer was there, and Freddie Stokes coming off the pile. DeMarco Farr replacing one of the best football players in the National Football League. They're going to try and pull a trap. He wants to show everybody he can play. Nobody wanted him. He said, waiting for that phone call, waiting for that phone call is what motivates him. He waited all day draft day. He psyched up. He went all day draft day. Nobody called. Rookie from Washington. Down from the gun, third down and 12. Looking for Sherrard. Penalty flag will be on the Rams. First down, New York Giants inside the Los Angeles 25-yard line. A pickup of 40 yards to Mike Sherrard. Dave Brown wanted to be able to throw deep. He's got to do that because the corners are squatting, taking the short routes, trying to pick him off. 
He threw an ugly pass. This was not a good throw, but it'll look good in the stats. Sherrod has to That's make an adjustment. By the defense, number 41. The pass was complete. The penalty has declined. First down. Good adjustment by Sherrod with people hanging. It fooled Todd Light because remember earlier we said Todd Light was going to intercept the ball that was batted because they're squatting saying if he's going to throw all short rots, we're going to pick him off. So people are going to be open downfield today. Sherrod, the former walk-on at UCLA, playing back home, grew up and was born here in the Los Angeles area. Leading receiver for the Giants. First down and 10 inside the rim, 25-yard line. Rodney Hampton. No place to go. We've always got places to go with James Brown. James? Redskin struggling with their young rookie quarterback, Heath Schuler out of Tennessee. Eighth play now, the Los Angeles of the New York Giants drive. And they got it second down and 11 to go. Well, confusion looks like in that giant backfield. There's a flag. They get it out to Aaron Pierce, and he's down to the 22-yard line. Two people moving at the same time. That's Canadian rules at the back shifting <laughs> with the wide out in motion. Can't do it. <laughs> this would be a big crowd here in Canadian football. What made you think of that? <laughs> Canadian football. Well, in Canadian football, you can all move. Illegal shift by the offense. Two men in motion at the same time before the snap. Number 27 and number 80. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. You'll see Rodney. They're going to move. These both people are going to move. One's going to move to the halfback. Then one's going to come in motion. And you can't all be moving at the same time. There's Rodney. Now Rodney's moving and now he's moving. No good. No good. Penalty makes it second down and 16. And they got Dave Brown in the gun. Four wide receivers. David Maggot flanks Brown. Good time. Wide on the money. Caught by Chris Calloway. Chris Calloway to the 16-yard line. And about a yard shy of the first down. What a nice run after the catch. Nicknamed Cab Calloway. He was cabbing that one. Did the spin. Worked back inside. You're playing defense. Looking at the quarterback. Dave Brown fires it. Nice throw. Nice tight. Cab's got it. Dipped his shoulder. Come back inside. Little shoulder shake, spin, trying to get every yard he can. Nice job. Flag was uh, tossed. Where was the spot? Where was the spot, George? Trying to figure out where to spot it. And it also got that flag, Jerry, to deal with on the field at about the 16. Probably then the spot will determine whether you accept the penalty or turn it down. Maybe that's what they're doing. I like the officials when they had on the throwback uniforms. I, I, <laughs> Those hats and everything. Well, they look better. There was a double foul on the play after it was over. Personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct by the defense number 80. Personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct by, by, the, by the offense 80, <laughs> by the defense number 20. The foul is offset. It brings up third down. 20 is Henley and 80 is Chris Calloway. And the official was confused at which number was on which team. These things happen. There's Henley with the defense. And there's Dan Reeves working with the short work week. They played on Monday. They flew out here on Friday. And the travel had eight and a half hours of travel with airplane and bus and getting checked in. That's a long haul. Third and three for Dave Brown. From the 17th. Rodney Hampton, first down for the 11-yard line of the Los Angeles Rams. Lance Smith, the nine-year starter who came from the Arizona Cardinals, opened the door for the first down in Hampton. They got in three wide receivers with one tight end and run the bend back. Here's the only tight end. He's going to start this way, see the hole, and cut her back. The motion is to cut off the backside. There's the hole. Reach and get it. Pad under pad. 
Lower your shoulders. Big drive. Upcoming the 10th play of it, eating up time. Down by seven, the Giants. First and 10. Play action, nice fake. Wide open, Chris Callaway to the seven. Anthony Newman makes the stop from his free safety position. They're going to Callaway a lot. He caught 14 passes coming in two today, and he's got a handful this afternoon in Los Angeles. The wide receiver coming in motion has been to cut off the backside against the run. So they think he's cutting off. He fakes, fakes, and then he's going to be the man on the bootleg, wide open. It's like getting a recess early. You just don't want to get caught by the teacher. Galloway did not get all the way in, but he did get, he did get five yards out of it. He has second down and five. Play action by Brown. A little high for Galloway. Covered by Daryl Henley. First time the Rams dogged and blitzed. They're sitting down there on the seven-yard line. They came after him, and uh, the ball had to come out in Hurley. When you do play action pass, Kevin, and you get a blitz or a dog, your protection isn't like it is when you drop back. you got to bring the ball out. First miss by Dave Brown in his last six passes. He had hit five in a row. Giants a pretty good team inside the 10 score. They don't miss much. Third down and five. And they got it with the seven. Brown for the shotgun. Secondary receiver. They'll throw it away. The pressure up the middle from Robert Young. Brown throws it away. Could not find anybody open. They did a good job. They had four wide receivers, and they had the back coming out. He looked there. He looked right, and he finally said, this one's going into the end zone. Watch the pressure on the quarterback. He looks to the back to the flat. He doesn't like that. He looks back over for the slot. He didn't like that and threw it in the stands. No interceptions. Field goal attempt now by David Treadwell. He's had one block. His longest has been 41. And this will be from 24 yards away on the season. He is 5-6. The hold with Kent Graham. And the Giants tack on three. 9-44 in the second quarter of play. New York now creeping closer to the Rams. 14-10, Los Angeles. Spectacular day for football. There's Chris Calloway. He, of course, had that taunting call against him in New Orleans a couple weeks ago that really drew up all kinds of fire toward that situation. Well, a couple minutes ago, Jerry, we just saw offsetting penalties from Calloway and, and Daryl Henley were going at it. Again, he needs to control those emotions. Todd Kinchin from the goal line. Todd Kinchin, there's a flag thrown on the play. All the way to the New York Giant 46-yard line. The only thing that was longer than the kickoff return was how far that flag was in the air. The man that threw the flag was a good 25 yards away from what he saw. That flag came out of nowhere. Holding by the receiving team during the return, number 57. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's the first penalty against the Rams today. Thomas Homko was the man who picked it up. And that's going to wipe out, Jerry, an outstanding return. And Kitchens has been quiet for a couple of years. One year he was excellent at punt returns and hadn't done much in a long time. And there he broke that and it's being brought back. The real guy on that play is, uh, I would probably sign that official as my backup quarterback. <laughs> Anybody that can throw a flag that far, well, and you know he's got great eyes to be that far away and see that thing and then be able to throw that far. And the wind at his back, too, as so that thing was sailing. Well, the Rams got a touchdown pass last time they had the ball. First down and 10 now with the 19-yard line. Play action by Miller. To the tight end, Troy Drake. He's got a first down to the 39-yard line, taken down by Corey Miller. Eight of 21 on the play. Talking to the quarterback and the head coach. They wanted to take the pressure off. He's going to do a play-action fake, so these people all get sucked in and bring the tight end right down on the seam. When you do this, 
throw and catch. I don't know where the safety was, too far outside. 26 was playing too far off to the to the flanker side, uh, Jarvis Williams. Your former quarterback's had a nice day throwing, five and nine for the Rams today. And watching the film last week, he threw good last week. They didn't win, but he threw good. But they lost a 14-point lead in Green Bay. Miller on first and 10. Incomplete. Midfield. Looking for tight end Troy Drayton. Jarvis Williams. The strong safety was on him. What a great play by Jarvis Williams. The tight end was open. The ball was thrown down away where nobody could make a play. But Jarvis jumps, gets down underneath. He's on the back. Here he is. Watch him. This is a play. Drive the rod. Driving on the rod. Lay out. Put it your hand down. That's big time football. Nice play by Jarvis. Had a couple of bad plays. He's going to come back and make up for it. Going to rear up on his hind legs. Second down, 10. The Giants will counter with six defensive backs. And a timeout taken by the Los Angeles Rams. Chris Miller has thrown two touchdown passes today. Chat with Chuck Knox on the sideline. Rams 14, the New York Giants 10. Los Angeles Rams have a touchdown run today by Rodney Hampton, who looks like he's back, hale and hearty, and running well for the New York Giants. 14 to 10 is the score with the Los Angeles Rams still on top. Kevin Harlan along with former NFL playoff coach Jerry Glenville. You have a lot of respect for these two coaches here today, don't you? These two coaches are really what the National Football League is all about, and they know each other. They socialize together. They both were in the AFC West uh, fighting each other twice a year, and they know how to coach. And you gotta love these two guys, and, and 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 they know each other. They know each other as well as they know anybody they coach against. Second down and ten. Miller from the gun. Good time. Jerome Bennis. He's got a first down and then some. Jerome Bennis spinning for a first down to the 39-yard line of the New York Giants, gain of 22, and John Booty is there to wrap him up. Miss tackle was a little flare, was a safety valve, and a missed tackle on what should be a, not a first down. You'll watch the back will flare out. And here we come up to make the tackle. Corey Raymond, Jerry 39. And what Corey did, he's had his head to the inside. He has to chase him back inside. He's got to keep outside leverage on that play because all his help is on the inside. First down and 10. And here's Jerome Bettis again. Inside the 30-yard line, Jerome Bettis, close to a first down. They always say that he's a guy it's hard to bring down on that play. He showed it. Run after contact. You'll see people pulling. They're going to run the counter jab. He'll start to his left, skip over, follow the back, follow the lineman. Run after contact. Cannot bring him down with an arm. You see people getting an arm around him. There comes the lineman. There comes the running back. Everybody running hard up through. Got to put more than an arm on him. Running heavy. Second down and less than a yard. Bettis, he's got the first down. So he was complaining last week that he was used too much. But I don't know a running back that doesn't want to like to get the football. I was uh, really surprised when I saw that, Kevin. I've never heard a guy say, I, I don't want to be an Earl Campbell. I don't want to be beat out of the league in five years. So the coach and, the, and, and Chris Miller both said, we're going to try to take all the hitting off him and, and throw at least half the time on first down because they were building so many defensive fronts to stop him. This is an offense, this Ram offense, that passes to set up the run. They have to do that because people started putting eight men on the line to stop Bettis. You have to throw to get the eight men back. See, right now the Giants have just four on this first and ten. And throwing on first down is Miller. Incomplete. Looking for Willie Anderson, covered by Jesse Campbell. Great break on the ball by Jesse Campbell. He really looked like he had great speed. He had anticipation. He got out of there. If that ball would have been a perfect throw, Jesse would have intercepted it. Secondary for the Giants has sure gone over an overhaul, haven't they? Three people that play for you, help you win, and they leave your team. They go to other teams. That makes it tough to coach. That makes it tough on the whole organization when you, when you lose three out of the four in the secondary. Second down and ten. And a 
again, Jerome Bennis. The 26, Keith Hamilton there to make the stop. Said that when Lou Holtz came to visit him at his home in Detroit, that <laughs> Lou had a phone right there, and Jerome's dad was taking a look at all the different players that Notre Dame was recruiting. It had linebacker and running back and fullback. And he said, well, I want to play fullback. What about these other guys? And so Holtz right there in Bettis' living room called all the other recruits and asked them what position they wanted to play. They all wanted to play linebacker, and Bettis signs with Notre Dame because he knew he would be the only fullback. No competition. Here's a third and eight from the shotgun. Miller. Good time. He's got Todd Kinchin. Third-year player from LSU. Makes the stop. It's what's called a center cut. And as we're looking at a defense, it's going to come from our right side. Watch the protection all the time. And watch the pocket. Everybody has good protection. Now they'll come right from your right. There's the center cut. Kitchens coming inside. Good tackle by Jesse Campbell. Kitchens' second reception all season long. And it's he, a gain of 18. He hasn't been doing much. Has not been playing. Has not been returning kicks. Here we find today he's a big factor. This is Bettis territory here. First down and goal. And Bettis gets the call. Bustling his way. Down near the six. Tackled by John Booty. Jarvis Williams tried to be elusive in the open field. He's not getting paid to avoid people. Did you see that little wiggle? Yeah, he thought he was uh, somebody else. You got to run heavy. You got to run over him to, to end your story with uh, with Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. The one thing they had to agree on. He says I will not come unless I can tape my shoes. And Lou Holtz says nobody tapes their shoes, but to get you here, you'll be taping your <laughs> shoes. He wanted white tape on his shoes at Notre Dame. No one knows why, he just wanted the team. Second down and goal. Bettis. Ah, the Giants got him. Michael Brooks and Keith Hamilton met him at the five. The defense building a wall, fighting him here at the five-yard line. Jerry, these are two teams that offensively have not done a great deal this season, but moments ago we saw total yards for the first half. Very, very impressive. They're getting into the rhythm, and I think what happens when you have uh, new players coming in this uh, new system that we have free agency, it takes a while for everybody to feel good. In fact, uh, Miller told us he never threw to the guys in preseason that he's thrown to now. 11th play of the drive from the shotgun Miller. Third and goal. He's got him. Out of bounds. Jesse Hester. The unrestricted free agent from the Indianapolis Colts covered by Willie Beeman. Good defensive job. Uh, we we watch the guy. He'll go into motion. He'll come back and make a motion, and they're going to run all the pick, and he's going all the way out, all the way to the outside. That's who he's looking for. If And it's, re it's really a done nice job by the defense. If the ball doesn't come on the diagonal to the flat, then you're taught to turn up. And so Miller waited. He knew he had it intercepted if he threw on the diagonal. So he waited for him to turn up, and then the defensive man pressured him out of bounds. Good, good football. Tony Zendejas from 22 yards away. Hitting his eighth consecutive field goal and extending the lead of the Los Angeles Rams. But down to 3.22 remaining in the first half. And the Los Angeles Rams on top, 17-10 to over the New York Giants. season record for interceptions that's a good question single season record for interceptions it'd have to be somebody probably in current times you think a night train lane but they didn't throw the ball that much night train lane though, always jumps in my mind if you start talking about what people did in the secondary oh he was a nice one there's a kickoff by Zendejas the end of the end zone bouncing in front of Maggot the kickoff by Zendejas who doesn't get many touchbacks that, that may like, be Zendayas' first touchback of the season. 3.15 in the first half. Dave Brown and the Giants trail by seven. Rams on top of the New York Giants, 17 to 10. And the answer to our Affleck... Hey, you were right. That'll teach you to ask me. I took a wild guess, and I got one right. 
I'll need you on Jeopardy. Dick Knight train lane. NFL record with 14 interceptions in the 52 season. With the just arrived Los Angeles Rams and moved here from Cleveland back in 46. And here's Rodney Hampton. Almost had the ball stripped and he twirls his way to the 23 with Shane Conlon and Roman Pfeiffer. Hey, Hampton's had a good first half, hasn't he? And he's looked quick. We talked about that. I think he's getting back in that rhythm. This time, he ran a straight-ahead run off to his left. There was nothing there. He bounced it outside. And Jumbo Elliott said he has vision this week. Jumbo said he, he really looked good in practice, and I think we're seeing that. Hampton, 16 carries and 74 yards. Opening out the quarterback, Dave Brown. Second down and seven. Brown to put it up. And into a thicket. A Los Angeles Rams defender Mike Sherrard comes up with the first down reception to the 31. That's a heck of a throw by Brown. Excellent throw, and the Rams should have known that had to be a pass because the, the uh, quarterback did not like where the tight ends were. Whenever everybody gets up in shifts, they'll let you stay if you're in the wrong place on a run, but he wants to know who he's throwing the ball to. When you get up and shift there by the defense, should holler, this is a pass, this is a pass. First down and 10. Good time for Brown. It's time as receiver Sherrard holds on to it. And he's out near the 38, 39 yard line, getting up off the pile. Marquez Pope there, number 22. Mike Sherrard bouncing back again from injury, 93 last year, a fractured hip socket. What? He's, uh, he's looking very good. The leading receiver for the New York Giants. Two minute warning. Both the Giants and Los Angeles Rams trying to stop two game losing streaks. Rams on top now by seven. We're at the two minute warning of the first half. Rodney Hampton has had a big day, especially in comparison to his Monday night game against the Minnesota Vikings. Well, last week he only had 13 attempts. Here we're not even at halftime yet, and we have 16. The key is if you get enough tries, then pretty soon you break a big one and you get that average up. So you got to have opportunities to be able to break it and get the average up. Brown from the gun. Second down two. David Megan. Megan close to a first down. He had to get out to about the 42 and around his ankles. He finds the rookie free agent DeMarco Farr. Good play. A draw on a passing down. DeMarco stayed right there. No huddle. No huddle. And the first down from the 42. Brown is on the money. Caught by Megan. Maggot, who had to pick up the slack when Rodney Hampton was injured. Probably the MVP in that 3-0 start for the Giants. Here's a second down now. Lewis, the rookie from Indiana, whacked by Roman Pfeiffer. Roman Pfeiffer can run faster than any linebacker that the Rams have. In fact, he can run faster than a lot of defensive backs. In this prevent situation, they're playing zone, Kevin, and he's sitting in there and allowing himself to break wherever the ball goes. Darian watching the Monday night game against the Vikings just before halftime. It was Dave Brown engineering a tremendous drive. The best I've ever seen him throw deep. He threw the ball with fire and zip on the ball, and he stuck it in there deep. Haven't gone deep yet with him. From the spread, third and three. Good time again for Brown. Got him down. I got in his face, and again... It's DeMarco Farr filling in for Sean Gilbert and Farr gaining momentum as the game goes on. A changeup for the defensive line. When you watch the Rams secondary, they're all playing man to man. He tried to get the ball through and there's DeMarco. They said he was too short. He was tall enough to bat that one down. But the Rams secondary really helped there. They, they got in there and played bump and run man to man. Got out of that zone. Third punt in six possessions for the New York Giants. Johnny Bailey awaits the punt from Mike Curran. Remember Chuck Knox telling us yesterday they wanted to be man to man so they could be more aggressive, they could be more physical. Said he was tired of watching all the zones. Great punt by Curran. Fair catch at the nine by Bailey, the former Arizona Cardinals Chicago Bear. That's a 43-yard punt, but look where it is inside the 10. Well, coming up at halftime, it's the Dockers' halftime. With Terry Bradshaw and James Brown, what a day in the NFL. And what about San Francisco's demolition of Atlanta? That was that was surprised a lot of people. Uh, I think Terry Bradshaw was so far off on our show, he thought that it would really show how much they missed me. It didn't prove much to old Terry. <laughs> Terry, you better pull out the rest of your hair, darling. 
<laughs> Chris Miller's had a good first half. Two touchdown passes, and now he's got 106 on the first half clock with which to work. And again, the beginning field position for the Rams today has not been that good. What they got to do here is get out at halftime. They're ahead. They're 90 yards away. Hang on the football here. Don't let the Giants have it. And give it to Jerome Bettis. And he bounces and works his way out to the 14-yard line. Second time that the Rams today have started inside their own 10-yard line. Felipe Sparks and Carlton Bailey. Nice hit by Bailey there, yeah. Kevin. Full speed, face right on him, running. Looked like a real football player. Rams on top, 17-10. Great to be in Southern California. The crowd dresses uh, differently here for the NFL than in other places. <laughs> they do. It's too bad, too, isn't it, huh? <laughs> what a beautiful stadium, beautiful setting. Beautiful fans. <laughs> Second time by. <laughs> Jerome Bettis, flag thrown, first down run. Bulldozing his way out to the 23, and Tom Newberry, who makes the start today at center with the nice hole, but looks like it's a penalty against Los Angeles. Fred Hockley is our referee today. That's what kills a coach. You've got the first down. You're going to be able to get out at half. The enemy's not going to get the ball. Holding by the offense, number 70. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. You make a big run and you got a penalty with your offensive line, which, by the way, we said earlier they've had 23 penalties in the offensive line. And Chuck Knox is trying hard to stop that by bringing officials to practice, watching them in practice, calling the penalties in practice, and trying to correct it. You know, you're out of trouble. Now you're back here at the six yard line. Now the Giants got to play with the clock, call the timeouts, got a shot here if they can force a punt to get some more points. Penalty was on uh, number 70, Wayne Gandy, a rookie today, starting in place of right tackle Jackie Slater. His first start ever. Second and 12. Jerome Bettis for the eight. He met Stacy Dillard there, the left tackle. Giants on a quick timeout. Going to have a chance here for the Giants to come back if they can make a play. I'm watching uh, Dan Reeves walk there, Jerry. He played a lot of years in the NFL, didn't he? I tell you, two guys I never like to walk watch walk on the sideline was Dan Reeves and of course Ditka. Uh, Dan Reeves uh, nine knee operations. Nine of them. Nine of them and I asked him in our meeting I says how's the how's the knee and you could tell by the look he'll never complain and he won't tell you but nine knee operations and uh, he's going to have to go with an artificial knee one of these days. Big rivalry between him and Chuck Knox. Chuck Knox fighting here trying to turn this program around. He told us the big difference between the last time he came here was the level of talent said the last time they made me the Rams coach we had some good players yeah, they did <laughs> came here in the 73 season lasted to 77 then went to Buffalo then about eight nine years up in Seattle came back to Los Angeles in 92 and yeah the, the, the level of talent that he found here was very low but they have they have really begun to change things here and you can see just how good both these coaches are among active head coaches and back of 25-year veteran Don Shula. There's Dan Reeves and that limp. He said that knee was about as painful as it had ever been. Bone on bone on the left knee. Third down and ten. A little play action by Miller. And he gets it out to Howard Griffin. Howard Griffin oh, has yes. first down. And he steamrolled somebody on that sideline. Sparks, Felipe I believe. Felipe Sparks, indeed. And he gets the first down. Griffith, second-year player from Illinois. Had his first start last week in Green Bay. Pad on pad, the low man wins. You got to get your shoulder pads under the people you're going to hit. Turn up field, stay in bounds. Pad on pad, low man wins. Boy, Sparks will be in there at halftime. He had some Sparks on that one. He said, they pay me to cover. What am I doing tackling this guy? <laughs> First down for the Los Angeles Rams, who will sit on the ball and go into a knee, will be the quarterback, Chris Miller. So the Los Angeles Rams with the reshuffled offensive line 
have done a great job. Miller has thrown a couple touchdown passes. The Giants have gotten their running game back on track. Hampton's had a brilliant first half. And Dan Reeves trying to stop a two-game losing streak for his New York Giants. And the players, although some have gone to the locker room, others have stayed on the field. You can see the clock ticking down. And now the clock will tick down, as you see, finally hitting zero, and that'll be it. And Reeves has walked out onto the 30, as you can see. <laughs> he's still out there talking. I think he's complaining about the play clock and that maybe it had not started quick enough. And, you know, that would have absolutely stopped the clock and uh, given maybe one more play here in this first half. But it's a tribute to a guy like Dan Reeves who continues to fight for everything he can get. Reeves has played and coached in eight Super Bowls. And he had a great story in the Daily News, I think it was, in New York, on his uh, growing up on a farm in Americus, Georgia. He's plowing some fields here today in Anaheim. His team down 17 to 10. Both teams trying to stop two-game losing streaks. The Giants and the Rams back in Anaheim with Jerry Glanville. This is Kevin Harlan. This first half highlight is brought to you by MCI. Proof positive. One of two touchdown passes by Chris Miller. Watch Chris Miller's face. Watch his eyes. As he watched, he looks for Troy Drayton coming inside. Not afraid. Standing in there. Feels healthy. Feels like an athlete. Good throw. The ball's coming right at you. Right in your living room. Troy's up. Double catch. Touchdown. Giants running game. Watch this guard making the play as Lance pulls around. He's going to block the safety. Anthony Newman. Anthony Newman's got to fill inside out. Got a cast on his hand. Got hurt in practice. Can't make the play. Todd Light can't catch him. Todd Light surrenders. Touchdown. Rodney Hampton. Rodney Hampton's had a big day, and it looks like the Giants have rediscovered their rushing game. In fact, Hampton has as much yards in one half today as the Giants as a team have rushed for almost in the last two games. I think he's about six, seven yards shy, but the point is he's had a great first half run in the ball. And the kickoff. Brad DeLuiso. Out of bounds. Johnny Bailey was under it. The flag thrown, so back to the 35. When it's your job and the only thing you do, you don't kick field goals. The only job you have is to kick off. you got to kick off and not the 35. I think we'll go to Kick four. off out of bounds by the kicking team. The ball replaced at the 40-yard line, first down. And some of the numbers in the first half in a 17-10 Los Angeles lead. You look at what's going on and, and 142 yards passing compared to... And, and then you look at total yards, everything's close. That's why we got a good game, 14 to 16. Everything's about even. First downs, 8 to 10. We got a good ball game here today. Rams have the ball, first down and 10 from the 40-yard line. They've only had one pass to Flipper. You'd think they'd try to get Flipper involved in this thing the second half. Miller to go right to work. And the tight end, Troy Drake. And he picks up about eight yards. He got the touchdown pass in the first half, met by Jarvis Williams, the strong safety. Tom Newberry playing center, made the snap, had good pass protection, ball throwing downfield. He was the guy, Kevin, that went downfield and blocked for the tight end running. You like a center that'll work that hard. Here's a guy who's been playing guard, and they moved him in the center. He's playing as hard as he can play. A lot of changes on that offensive line. They're doing a good job. They got all new guys in there. Got a new tackle. Got a guy's never started before. The number one pick, Wayne Gandy. Second down. And Jerome Bennis. And he crosses midfield. Michael Brooks got him. Maybe too late, though. He's... Jerome Bettis is very close to the first down. Is he the best power running back, you think, Jerry, in the National Football League? I think he can break more tackles. He can run over people. What the Rams are doing new, they're going to send motion, and the motion guy's job is to cut off pursuit from the backside, but they're leading him up through the hole. So he comes through with the backside guard. Something new for the Rams. You thought a good matchup today would be Bettis against the number four rush defense in the National Football League of the Giants. 
shy of a first down by the length of the football, third in that distance. Goal line offensive formation. And Bettis. Jerome Bettis, the battering ram, has a first down to the Giant 49. He had to earn every step on that one. The Giants mustered up, played tough. He's checking in his helmet, seeing if everything's still in there. <laughs> May have lost an ear. He's looking around. Delightful kid. We spent a lot of time with him yesterday. Detroit, Michigan. Hometown. Bought his mama a brand new satellite dish so she could watch every game. First down and 10 for the Los Angeles Rams. End around. Jesse Huster. Picks up about four and a half, and there again is Jarvis Williams chopping him. When the play developed, it looked like we were going to have a big offensive reverse. Misdirection, reverse, flanker around, but Jarvis Williams diagnosis, fakes the fullback. Looks like we got lots of room except for one man. Jarvis Williams stayed at home, makes a good tackle. Brings up a second down and six for Chris Miller. Three receivers, including the tight end, Drake. Who's number 84? Miller throws it away. Throws it away on second down. Good play by Jesse Campbell. They wanted to run the bootleg off the play axe. Jesse Campbell ate the tight end up. He had Troy Drayton smothered. How do you like the way Miller is thrown to different receivers today? Pushing that ball all around the tight ends. Of course, got the touchdown. Running backs, four catches. But I don't think Flipper's been thrown to enough. I think you got to get Flipper involved in this thing if you want to go downtown. He's been quiet. Miller has hit five consecutive receivers. Shotgun. There he's going for Willie Anderson. High school player from Paulsboro, New Jersey. Incomplete pass. Los Angeles has got a punt. The Giants playing man-to-man -man on third down. Man-to-man -man bump and run. And Flipper's supposed to lean inside and break outside in a real bad throw. Did not get there. Flipper got his name when he was a youngster from a babysitter. The babysitter said every time that he cried, it sounded like a dolphin. So they named him Flip. He's named after a dolphin by a babysitter. He should be playing in Miami. Lendetta's kick. Megan will let it bounce, and it's a great bounce for the Los Angeles Rams. And look where the Giants will be. 44-yard punt. You think there's some revenge with Sean Lendetta? Waived eight games into last year by the New York Giants. He was thinking about it today. His Rams on top of his old team, the Giants. 17-10. Giants kind of in a slippery slope position right now. Down at their one, isolated there, and the young quarterback, Dave Brown, first and ten. This is Rodney Hampton. And he bangs his way out to the four. Tackled by Fred Stokes. Where has Rodney Hampton been running today? Where has he been attacking that line of the Los Angeles Rams? You look at the graft. To his left, he has four rushes for six yards. Up the middle and to his right, he has ten up the middle for 36 yards. And he broke the long one for the touchdown to his right. Sean Gilbert is the best defensive player the Rams have out today. A rookie free agent taking his place, but they have... Not necessarily been running on him with a great deal of effectiveness. He plays the right side. Play action by Brown. Oh, nice pass. And it's caught by Chris Callaway. First down to the New York Giant 20-yard line. Callaway's hands as he reaches out. They do a play action to take pressure off the quarterback. Quarterbacks, he's going to throw a deep out. Made it look like he's going to throw a go. And he watch him break to the out. Watch Callaway's 
hands and eye. Look and look right at the oh. ball and bring it in. And what a beautiful picture by our Fox television crew here today. Outstanding job, fellas. Callaway to catch. Fox have the best cameramen in all of football. There's Donington. Rodney Hampton got a block. Now he's out to the 27, and he picks up seven. Doug Riesenberg had a nice block from his right tackle position. Two tight ends on the line of scrimmage, heading one way, heading to his left, and then cranking it back, running back on the cutback, and running heavy, pad under pad. He gets his pad lower than the tacklers and scatters him. Yardage gained after contact with both of the backs. Second down and two. Checking off his Brown. Rodney Hampton. Conlon from behind chases him down. And all he can carve into that Ram defense is about a yard. Rodney Hampton, three consecutive seasons of 1,000 yard rushing. Shane Conlon playing linebacker. 56, you'll see him, here he comes, he's got to shed the block. Grab a hold of him, shot the gap really, didn't shed the block, got a hold of him, grabbed him by the shoulder. And up for the first down on the run. By Rodney Hampton. From the 31. Hampton again. This time he claws his way to the 42, another first down. Elliott, Riesenberg, the tackles. We're opening doors in the pathway for Hampton. Hampton, we said earlier, showing quickness. We're going to get traps. We're going to get people pulling. But he'll cut it back inside. He looks to the trap hole. Look at the quickness coming through. Making people avoid. He's, he's not hitting contact when he doesn't have to. Hampton has gained more today than the Giants have gained in the last couple of games. And he gets it again. And that time, he moves a pile for about seven yards, Jerry. He is running as hard now as he's run in a long time. And they're bringing the Rams, they're bringing DeMarco Favre back into the game. He had been substituted by David Rocker for this whole series. 92, David Rocker's leaving. They're back to the rookie. They're back to the free agent. They're back to the guy that's carrying the torch. 100-yard game for Hampton. The first 100-yard rushing performance in three games. Gary Downs is in the backfield now on second down and two. And it's Gary Downs, the rookie. First down to the Ram 44. Gary Downs, the third round pick from North Carolina State. What made that play go was the wide receiver, Cab uh, Chris Calloway. He was out on the flanker. He came in, got up all over the safety, and allowed Rodney to break outside and pick up the yardage. Good job by the wideout. Wideout's got to do more than catch the ball. Hey. Wideout's got to help the running game. You don't think of them blocking all the time, do you? They have to. You know, every time, every week we see a good rushing game going, we see wideouts getting involved in the rushing game. This giant drive began back at their one-yard line. This is the ninth play. And again, Gary Downs. The rookie is smothered by Robert Young, number 76. They took the tight end off the line of scrimmage and motioned him to change the strength of the formation. The safeties made a good adjustment from the Rams. It seemed like a good thing at the time, Kevin, but uh, everything doesn't work out like you wanted to. The Rams did a good job. And number 34 must look familiar to Rams fans. That was Lewis Tillman's old football number. And of course, he left via free agency to the Chicago Bears. Out down has to be that Lewis Tillman tight back for the New York Giants. Here's a second and 13 for Brown in the New York offense. Audible, first audible we've seen by Brown. Shuffle pass. Howard Cross. Close to a first down. That may have been the longest pass of that kind in <laughs> NFL history. <laughs> what, what had happened there, he audible and everybody didn't get the new play. And one thing uh, Dan Reeves has told us, we're going to quit the audible and we're just going to try to make it work. That He said, we've been trying to plug in and have the perfect play every time against the perfect defense. And he said, what we're going to change, the big difference is everything can't be perfect. Somebody's got to run over somebody. Somebody's got to knock somebody down. So they were not going to do a lot of audible. That was the first audible, and there was a bust on the audible. Somebody made a mistake, but the quarterback improvised. 
shuffle pass for what, about nine yards? It was a good gain of nine on the play. Timeout. Player down is the center, Brian Williams. He's been a backup and a spot starter at guard and center over the last five years. Bart Oates is gone. Brian Williams plugged in. Rams by seven. Brian Williams walked off under his own power. He'll probably come in taking his place now as the long snapper, Adam Schreiber. Let's see what the kind of connection he has in the snap with quarterback Dave Brown on a crucial third and one. Rodney Hampton. And he goes head over heels to the 34. Shane Conlon, the leading tackler for the Rams. Shane Collin on a blitz, got penetration, got after the running back before he had a chance to make a break. Hot day here in Anaheim, California. Look at Fred Stokes. He's playing across from Jumbo Elliott. It's been a heavyweight fight on third down. Look at the cut under the eye. Look at the swelling. He's been down for the count two or three times, but he'll get back up. Jumbo oh, Elliott off of back surgery is playing a great football game. Jumbo said, I said, well, what do you like about coming out here to play? And he said, we're on grass. With my body, I love to be on grass. Fourth down. And they're going to go for it. Stokes is coming back. Everybody, they're all switching personnel. Brian Williams has come back in as the center for Dan Reeves' offense. Brown is howling for one more tight end. Three tight ends for the New York Giants. Upcoming the 12th play of a very important drive. He didn't get it. Everybody with the Ram uniform got a hand on him, led by Joe Kelly. And the gamble didn't pay off, and the Rams come up with a big defensive play. Short yardage, ball, go, ball game time, and we're carrying the ball all the way across the formation. They didn't have much yardage to gain, and they tried to come from the left halfback position all the way across the formation to the right. I was surprised when I looked at the set. I thought Rodney Hampton would be at fullback, Kevin, and they take the short run to the short side. They're over here. They're trying to come all the way across. Penetration. Shane Collin up and in, attacking the gap. Good Conlin. hit. Conlon is the player down right now. Dave Brown in his offense couldn't get the first down. They give it back to Los Angeles. To Chris Miller, Los Angeles Rams touchdown passes. 17 to 10. The Rams. Shane Collin walking off the field. Looked like a worse shape than Fred Stokes. Cut face, swelled up bleeding. It's a heavyweight fight here today. Freesburg, New York. Shane Conlon. On downs, the Rams get it first and 10 for their 36 yard line. And Jerome Betts. He's out to about the 38 yard line. Met by Eric Howard and Keith Hamilton. Rushing has been the key for the Giants today, although they have not overtaken the Los Angeles Rams. They felt they had to run, and that's exactly what Rodney Hampton has done. Miller with the two touchdown passes. And you can see what Hampton has done by himself. He's got 105 of New York's 112 yards. Now, Bettis last week only had 65 yards against Green Bay, and he has had the front of the carry today. Los Angeles is second down and eight. Miller and his receiver, the rookie Isaac Bruce Tripp. He caught an early first quarter touchdown pass. Corey Raymond was shadowing him. He sent the motion to build a three receivers to the quarterback's left side, hoping that they would be outside, which they were, outside man to man, and tried to throw the slant. Tripped and fell down. No completion. Again, here is an offense, Jerry, that continues to pass to set up the run. And continues to change the personnel. They have different types of people. Right now, they have four wides and one back. Third down and eight to go. Miller from the gun. Oh, they're coming after him. Keith Hamilton. 
Second sack today for the Giant defense. First time that the Giants came after him. They brought the man over the slot to the quarterback's right side. You'll see this guy, of all these linemen, will come to the inside, and they'll bring the man over the slot. Here they come. There's nobody left to block him. The tackle flares out, and bingo, you got the sack. I think that's a big play because you go for fourth down. You don't make the fourth down. You're a little bit of a downer, but you snatch the ball right and back. you get your defense to play well for get it. Get the defense to cover up a mistake made by the offense. Team. Sean Landetta. High spiral. Wow, he's punting today, isn't he? Maggie, he is indeed. Oh, Cliff. Three. Cliff. Flags are all over the field. Three of them. Maggie trying to jitterbug his way. 51-yard punt. Five-yard return. We saw one clip for sure all the way up here. I think the other fisher just threw the flag because he saw one on the other side. Try to reinforce the call. But uh, definitely a clip on a return. Tom Homko. Big he's, special teams player. I think he's had two penalties in special teams today. I believe you're right, Joe. This game is presented by authority of the NFL and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast for other use of the telecast without the expressed written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. I think fans here in Los Angeles are wondering if they're going to have a football team here. <laughs> the uh, you know, there's, there's things in the newspaper about moving. Uh, people trying to buy the team and, and stay here. It's too bad. It's a beautiful setting, but we have a lot of seats here disguised as fans. <laughs> Illegal block in the back by the receiving team number 34 during the return. Ten yard penalty. First down. Here's Megan on the return. There's the clip right there. Oh, there's a the clip. They're calling that clip right there up too high. I'm Gary Downs. New York quarterback Dave Brown down by seven. Queen Mary here in the Southern California area. Floating in the harbor. Rodney Hampton has been floating the New York Giants so far. It's time for Dave Brown to come to the floor. The pitch out to Rodney Hampton. He lost the yard. Met by Marquez Pope and Joe Kelly. We now meet James Brown back in Hollywood. James. May have been about as big a game as the NFL has seen in this uh, very young season. Second down and ten for the Giants. They trail 17 to 10. Dave Brown. Caught by Howard Cross. That's a first down. Tumbling to the Giant 31. Brown was right on the money. Jumbo Elliott went to back surgery. Had a long rehab in the offseason. Got the name Jumbo at Michigan, but he plays Jumbo. Watch him. Pass protection. Man coming inside. He always gets that hand on the face. Sits outside. Having a heck of a ball game today. Broke his ring finger. Had a big club-like tape gauze thing on his left hand in the preseason. Back surgery last year. His first year as an all-pro. On first down, Rodney Hampton charging up the middle and picking up about three yards and most of the defense had a hand in the tackle DeMarco Farr the rookie free agent he's gonna he's gonna go watch his hero remember who his hero is no Hulk Hogan <laughs> watch him play here watch him stick his hands stick his hands up on William Roberts stand straight up come down the line and put his hat right on the ball carrier playing like he belongs in the National Football League which most people didn't think he did like he's going to go watch Hulk Hogan after this game at the Anaheim Convention Center. Wrestle the <laughs> World Championship. <laughs> That's his hero. Everybody's got a hero. That's his. Looks like Jumbo. There I go. I went and bragged on Jumbo. And I believe he left too soon. Now the question is who flinched first? Sounds like a Fox movie, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you're the size of Jumbo, one little flinch will get a flag. False start by the offense prior to the snap. Number 76. 
Five-yard penalty remains second down. Only the fourth penalty against the Giants today here in Anaheim. I blame me. Every time I brag on somebody, I cause a problem. Well, that'll teach you that. I'm not going to brag on them no more. <laughs> Size 14 shoe, and he's going to flinch with a 14 shoe. Bo Schembechler gave him that name Jumbo. First day of practice up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Second down, 11. What a catch. Howard Cross. A couple yards shy of a first down. He picked up about nine on the play. Marquez, Pope, and Joe Kelly were there. The Giants had two tight ends, two wide outs, two tight ends, two wide outs. When they did that, the Rams are too deep zone. This corner has the flat. He rolls, turns his back. He's got to take the outside break of the tight end. There it is. So you go underneath that coverage. Jim. That coverage is good against White. Here comes the ball in the corner. You got a trap and you got to hit him outside in. A little bit too late by uh, Henley. Waiting too long in the flat. Third down and two. Out of bounds, incomplete. Sherrard was the target of the scrambling Dave Brown. Pressure up the middle from Robert Young, and the Giants have got a punt. I notice when he escapes a lot, talking about Brown and, and runs to get away, he throws sidearm. He tried to sidearm that one in there, but they ran out of the width on the field. Did Phil Sims used to throw a little sidearm at times, too? I, 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 he had a little bit, but I don't remember him as a sidearm thrower. What's interesting is Phil Sims and Dave Brown talk every week on the telephone after the game. And Phil Sims goes over the plays with him. What, what, what was this play and how'd you release it? And Phil Sims is a great person trying to help a young kid. Horan to punt. And a beauty it is. Boy, he has rebounded after two horrendous games. What a punt inside the three at the two. A 59-yard punt. And Mike Horan, the slumping punter for the New York Giants, has had a spectacular day. And has helped New York stay in this game. Yet the Giants still down by seven. Late third quarter. Rams a couple touchdown passes from their quarterback. On top 17 to 10. Jerry, it's been a day for the punter here in Anaheim. Both punters were struggling just a week ago. Landetta had a terrible day, and Horan was the same. And both today are over 49-yard punt average. So they both made a good comeback. From the two, stranded there, Chris Miller. He got a first and ten. Caught by Howard Griffin. Out of bounds, incomplete. Thrown out of your own end zone. He looked for the split in deep. The Giants did a good job. They had that cover. Jesse Campbell had rolled over, so he hit the back in the flat. Miller is one of five this half. He's had all kinds of injury problems, Jerry. The abdominal muscle pull, rib injuries, a shoulder injury against San Francisco, and the knees, of course, in the last couple of years have been a big problem for him. In fact, in this knee surgery, they asked him if he wanted to use uh, parts from a cadaver. He said no, he'd stick with his own body. And Jerome Bettis. To the five, and a gain of three. Brooks and Corey Miller met up head on. Trying to get a little breathing room. Going to change personnel. One thing the Rams do, they change the types of people that are in the game. One, one play is three tight ends. Next play is two tight ends. Then they, I was going to say, I don't think I've seen them with the same formation on two consecutive plays all day. They're trying to do that so they loosen up the defense so they can run the football. Third down and seven. Here comes Chris Miller. He did not get the first down. He had to get to the 12, and Michael Brooks saw to it that he didn't get there. Good pass protection by Jumbo Elliott. And again, uh, not by Jumbo, by uh, Clarence Jones. Had good pass protection, shoved him to the outside. Chris Miller ran, looked like an athlete, looked like an athlete. That's what he said. He felt good for the first time. That's the end of the third quarter with the score here in Anaheim. The Rams 17, the Giants 10. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. The 
giant offense was the story in the first half. It's been all New York defense in the second, forcing Sean Landetta now to punt for a third consecutive time in the second half. Dave Megan awaits. The offense of the Giants has got to get going. Their defense has given them opportunity after opportunity. Landetta. Megan on the fly. He's going to get the Giants a great beginning field position inside the Los Angeles 40-yard line. Blair Bush makes the stop, a punt of 41 yards, and a return of 12 by Dave Megan. If you're looking for action and adventure, turn to Jerry, no, turn to Fox <laughs> this Friday night and meet a new breed of superhero, Mantis, followed by the show USA Today calls excitement, thrilling, and terrifying. Kind of like this broadcast, The X-Files. <laughs> it's a night of all-new episodes this Friday night. Friday night. On Fox. There was a penalty flag on the play. It was called against the Los Angeles Rams. And that further benefits the New York offense, which is only seven points away in a very close game. I think now... Uh, for the Giants, Kevin. On that punt exchange, they've gained 21 yards. So you can say with the punt exchange, they've picked up two first downs. So you got the ball. You got to go win the football game here. You're at the 40 yard line. Now's the time to rear up and go win the football game. And if they're going to do it, it'll be Hampton who's carried them so far. But I even think maybe more importantly for Dan Reeves will be their quarterback, Dave Brown. What's happening on first down for the Giants? They got 14 runs and four passes. So I think you know they got to change that a little bit here. They got to they got to get it going. Wyman Henderson is down, and they continue to look at him. He was getting up initially, then he got back down again. We didn't think it was going to be this long on the field. Dan Reeves studying his chart. He's he's got to decide does he run the ball here at the 40? That's a good, you know he calls the plays, so he's one of the few NFL head coaches that actually calls his own plays. Now he's going to make the decision for the young quarterback and. He told us in the meeting that the young quarterback learns quick. Now the Giants are going to get their best starting field position of the day, and they need it. As we start the fourth quarter, Dan Reeves and the Giants down by seven. Been a roller coaster ride for the Giants today. Their offense is great in the first half. They struggle in the second. Their defense has kept them in the game in this second half. Now the offense must come alive early in the fourth quarter. First down and 10 from the Los Angeles 40. Play action by Brown. He's got Sherrard. Covered by Tom Light. Incomplete pass. Brown told us yesterday, Jerry, he wanted to go deep to Sherrard more often. What they did is they faked the draw. We said they've been running on first and 10 at a 16 to 6 rate. They'll do the play action. He'll stick the ball in there like they're going to run the lead draw and throw the deep post. Puts the bare hand in, holds the ball, and slightly overthrows it. Too far. Todd Light all over his man. Good coverage. Second down and 10. This is Rodney Hampton. They're waiting for him right there. Roman Pfeiffer, who is named after former Rams quarterback Roman Gabriel. There's Wyman Henderson. He was covering that punt, and he popped something, pulled a groin or popped a hamstring as he was running down. You don't play regular, and you cover kicks. You get off the bench, and now you got to be that split in and run 100 miles an hour, and something popped loose. Third down now, eight to go for Dave Brown and the shotgun. Flanked by Megan. Good time. Knocked away. Looking for Thomas Lewis. Great play by Steve Israel. Great protection. Great protection for the quarterback. The Giants are protecting the quarterback. No pressure on him. He can stand in there strong. He's big and tall. Watch these people block. I'm not going to brag on Jumbo anymore. He's got a good hold on his man. Bounced right off. Giant offense. Jerry just cannot get it going in this second half. And there they begin the Los Angeles Ram 40-yard line. They got to they gotta get another one of those punts inside the five here to get this thing where it was on the last exchange. There's a... Wow. Wow, he did it. 
You better believe he did it. No, nope. well, maybe not. He did. Haran knocks it out at the 12. The directional kicker that was with Reeves in Denver is now with him in New York. And after a couple bad games, Mike Haran, who is from Orange County, California, and works here during the offseason for a computer company. With a big kick. In fact, for that company, Mike Haran, who has a mechanical engineering degree in the offseason, designs radar equipment. So he always comes back here with his family and I think that's why I cut him. He always had me on radar too fast. <laughs> I think that's why I let him go. Well, now the Rams who have punted the last three times they've had the ball. Every time they've had it in the second half. For the first and ten. And Jerome Bettis, Submarines, outside the 15. Fox, Eric Howard with the tackles. Ran the fullback blast just straight ahead, blocking away from the blocking back. At the blocking back set one way and went the other. Here's the last three possessions of the Rams. And what you have to watch is six plays, three plays, three plays. Punt, 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 punt. There's my man Chuck. He's got to get something going. Second down and seven. Dennis. Jerome Bennis to the 23, and he should have enough for a first down. The former giant Clarence Jones, the left tackle, had a big block on that way. That's their first first down this half, and they got it by run, run, run. Even though they were going three and out, three and out, they were throwing the football. They weren't just trying to sit here on the lead, but uh, I guess the coach says, we got to go get some time. we got to help our defense a little bit. You do that by running the football. First and ten. Screen pass to Bettis. He picks up six more. Corey Widmer with the stop. Good pressure on the uh, quarterback uh, by Howard. He was chasing Chris Miller around, but the defense for the Giants, they love to play two deep zone with a, with a corner just sitting in the flat, and that's why it's hard to screen on him. Nobody went deep from the left side, so your corner is sitting there waiting for the ball to come out that way. Good play. Rams have won six of the last nine games they have played against the Giants. This is the eighth consecutive meeting between these two teams. It was second down and four. And again, it's Bennis. And he powered his way close to the first down. Whitmer saw that he didn't reach it. Michael Brooks, the leading tackler on the Giants. With the assist. He, you know they're going to go to Bettis though now, Jerry. They're, they're going to eat up that clock, don't they? And uh, he didn't follow his guard that time. Chuck Beelin was the puller, and he started following him, and he didn't like what he saw, so he actually cut back up inside quickly where the guard had pulled from. Last week in Green Bay, the Los Angeles Rams lost a 14-point lead to the Packers and eventually lost 24-17. to They got the first down. And the one thing that Chuck Knox wanted to do in the second half was protect his lead. Up until this drive, they haven't shown much life, but maybe this is the drive that'll do it for him. He'd been throwing the football, and they hadn't been good at throwing the football. In this series, he's come back and run the football, run it well with the big back, Jerome Bettis. Uh, you know, behind a makeshift line. Absolutely. Three new starters today on that line for the Los Angeles Rams. Brostick and Slater, good players that are not dressed out. First down and ten. And they give it to Jerome Bettis. And this is a gain of eight. Cutting back. This is Chuck Knox. This is what he loves. The fullback. He'll head one way. He'll head out this way and cut her back. Start off to his own left. Bring it back. There's the cutback hole. Run heavy. Hard to tackle, hard to tackle. Watch the people try to tackle them. You got to get your full head on them. They'll go through the arms. And a good hit finally at the end. Zigzagging his way for a game seven. And again, it's Dennis. 
This time met by Michael Brooks, the former Denver Bronco. That's the play he must have told us he doesn't like to carry on those. He got hit by everybody. Hampton has got 105 yards rushing for the New York Giants today. That man, that is 68 yards and 21 kills. Four wide receivers. From the gun, Miller. Third and three. Nice fake. First down reception, Todd Kinchin for the Giant 49. Gain of 11 yards on the play. Third down in red. They faked the counter. You'll see him. He'll fake the run. He'll take the ball, fake to that halfback, and run out around. And he throws to Kitchens coming across the field. I believe Kitchens gets hurt on this. I think he pulled something. He couldn't walk after that catch. He had one catch, Jerry, coming into today. He's had two receptions today, both on third down. And he had a nice kickoff return that was called back because yes, of holding. You're exactly right. First down and 10 from the 49. And again, the battering ram for the Los Angeles Rams. Jerome Bennis, Michael Strahan was there. Michael is uh, an unusual guy. He played one year of college football. To get a scholarship, correct? He was in Germany. There he was in Germany going to school, and his dad said, you're going back and live with my brother, your uncle, and you're going to play one year of high school football, and you get a scholarship. And he, he did. did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then he went back to Germany to graduate from high school. That's, that man must feel great. Just drop in town to get a scholarship. <laughs> Second down. Six to go. And we're down to under nine minutes left in the game. Jerome Bettis. To the 41, and a gain of three. Strahan, Miller were there. Nice cutback. He's running for daylight. He's not going where the blocker's going. The lead blocker went in, and the blocking back, uh, Howard Griffin had a block, a big down line, had a block Keith Hamilton. When Jerome saw that, he cut right the other way. He wasn't going to run in there on a mismatch. Nine of the ten carries, or ten plays, have gone to Jerome Bettis on this drive. Then he's going to get it now in third and two. I wouldn't give it to anybody else, but they're in the shotgun call timeout. Miller's going to let that clock go down to one second on the play clock and 8.08 on the game clock here in Anaheim, California. Both teams trying to stop two game losing streaks. The Rams and Giants were in the fourth quarter. Los Angeles Rams holding on to a seven-point lead, 17 to 10, with former NFL playoff coach Jerry Glanville, Kevin Harlan. Eight minutes, eight seconds left in the game. What do you think? Don't leave. Don't leave the refrigerator. <laughs> don't, don't worry about the refrigerator. Don't eat a hot dog. This is the last eight minutes. Everybody's got to play the best football they can play. It's a crucial game. In fact, it's a must game. So what we got to do is both teams got to play the best they can play. This is the ball game, the last eight minutes. Big play here, third down and two. Incomplete. Oh, no. He's going to call hitting the quarterback late. Flag thrown. Michael Brooks came up and knocked Chris Miller into next week. We'll have to see that. He was on a blitz. He was untouched. He was untouched. Only thing, maybe he hit above the shoulder. If you touch a quarterback above the shoulder, around the head, it doesn't matter if you're there on time. Personal foul, roughing the passer by the defense, blow to the head. 15-yard penalty, first down. I'd like to see that again. All right, watch 94 down at the bottom. He's in a blitz, and he's on touch by human hands. Here he comes. The guard's trying to get him. Oh, bro. And the helmet went up and slapped him behind the head. And he's getting leg cut at the time. That's tough. Did you see the blocker cutting him there, Kevin, when he does that slap? Penalty situation for the Giants and the Los Angeles Rams today. So you're saying it's a bad call? Well, technically, you can never hit a quarterback above the head. But if you're hitting me on the knee and I'm falling and swimming, I happen to slap you on the head, I don't think I'm accountable. <laughs> and, a and after their defense held so nicely, too, on that play, Jerry, now they breathe new life for the Rams. Off the 26th of New York. First down. 
Dennis comes in, and like the defense has done all day, they come there with an answer, and that time it was handed out by Keith Hamilton. One cutback's too many. He started off in one direction, and we've been saying all afternoon, then he heads the other way, he should have he should have kept going where he was going. He cut right into the crowd. But we're not mad at him. He's having a good game. Well, the Rams have held this ball since just under 14 seconds remaining. 14 minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. Now we're down to seven and a half, and the clock is ticking. And Miller is faced with a second down and ten. Picked off on the play by Corey Miller. His second interception of the season. What a play. What a play. He rolled over with that great protection for Chris Miller. He had no pressure on him. And you'll watch. He, he rolls over, comes up underneath. Big time football play. Somebody had to step up. And that was a step up if there ever was one. Corey Miller. It's going to be to your left as you're watching it. Here he is. He rolls up underneath, stretches out, and takes that ball away from Troy Drayton. Reach out, reach out. Oh, wow. Right off the right hand there. This may be the opportunity for the New York Giants. Let's see what they do with it. First down and 10 for Dave Brown. Little play action. Look at the time. And here comes Brown to the 10. Roman Pfeiffer made the hit. Everybody in New York that's sitting in your living room that's getting excited watching this game, nobody was open. We're up here. We, I looked the whole field over and saw what the, he did the right thing. He had a run. Everybody was covered. Miller with an interception. He's thrown two touchdown passes today. Now his counterpart, Dave Brown, second down and seven. money it's caught by Mike Sherrard yardage good for a first down to the 20-yard line the curl route every week it's the curl route it's like a mystery you can stick the curl when everything else is failing and you make a play you run one of the inside receivers to the boundary to the flat on a diagonal and curl the other and take your pick Brown who grew up 20 minutes from Giants Stadium but grew up a Jets fan now into the Giants first down and ten. Not much there. Falls ahead for a gain of one. Marquez Pope was the man to knock him. And Jimmy Jones came from the backside. They tried to cut him off. Jimmy Jones, the left tackle. That's not Jerry Jones. He never owned the Cowboys. This he, is Jimmy. He used to get paid, though, by the Cowboys. He used to get paid by the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Good play. He was running, coming down behind the line. Five and a half minutes remaining. Second and nine. Giants down by seven. Brown to cross for the 27. Joe Kelly jumps on his back and rides him down. This quarterback had maybe as good a drive as we ever saw to end the half last week. He's got to step up. What if he does that again? You got yourself something really good. So, you know, I look around this stadium here, many empty seats, 35,000 people. This is a time where you want your home crowd to get loud and drown out the opposing quarterback. It just ain't happening here. They don't have enough people to make the noise. They're trying. I, I give the credit. The people that are here are trying. Third down and two. Looking for Sherrard, covered by Todd Light. They needed two, and they went long, Jerry. It reminds me when we started the game saying the defensive backs on Brown were squatting. Here's Tarlot. Watch him. He's in the backfield. He's looking at the quarterback. He's already he's already driving the route for the pickoff. He doesn't believe they're going to go deep. We've only had one deep, deep throw on him. you got to come back. He's squatting. He's playing for the short rock. So Haran's got a punt for a sixth time today. And they'll go back to Johnny Bailey, number 21. Bailey is back at about the 30 for the Los Angeles Rams. They're down to 445 left in the game. Another great punt. Another punt. Look at that thing. Hang. Great hang time. Bailey. There's a flag. 
And he's collared at the 34. This clip may be on Henley. I'm not sure he's going to be big. A couple broad players are down for the Giants. Jesse Campbell made the stop. One of the players down for New York was Marcus Buckley. He gets up now, walks off on that 47-yard punt by Mike Horan. Horan is uh, trying to keep his job. A week ago, he was trying to give it away. Both these teams have lost two games in a row apiece coming into today. Illegal block in the back by number 26 of the receiving team during the return. 10-yard penalty, first down. Anthony Newman. Didn't like the call, old Anthony. Got a cast on his hand. He's 26 coming into your screen. Hit him, hit him on the back. Fourth quarter clock at four and a half minutes. Chuck Knox up by seven over Dan Reeves. Four and a half minutes remaining in the game. Does the Giant defense and Dan Reeves have one more big series? And does Jerome Bettis and the Los Angeles Rams have a couple more carries in them? That's the matchup now on this series. Safety walking up. They're going to build an eight-man front. And here's Bettis. And on his 25th carry of the day, as a flag is thrown back at the 16, he picked up about six on that first down run, and it's against the Los Angeles Rams. Again, the offensive line before this game had 23 penalties. The holding penalties are killing the Rams. Now this goes to the, uh, no longer a ball control, no longer feed the ball to Bettis. The whole strategy Holding changes. Holding by the offense, number 72. Half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. Clarence Jones. The former, former New York Giant who played with New York from 91 through 1993. He's on the left side. That's Clarence. Sets up. Oh, he's got him tugging on that jersey. You can't stretch the jersey. All those players, what, tie him in knots and make him as skin tight as they possibly can. And they roll the, they roll the extra material underneath the arm and tape it. So there's nothing to grab it. Nothing to grab. Only the fourth penalty against the Rams today. Giants have five penalties on them. First and 18 with the penalty here. Chris Miller. Coming back to the football was Willie Flipper Anderson. And he is about two yards shy of a first down and his first reception today for the leading receiver for the Rams. A bootleg out of your own end zone. Nobody was open, and Flipper did a good job coming back towards the quarterback. Here he is. He's one yard out of the end zone, throws the ball. Now he turns Flipper. Now he comes back. He wasn't doing this before the ball was thrown, and he comes back and makes the catch. That's about as beautiful a shot, folks, as you're going to see here. Sparks didn't have a chance. Don't blame Sparks on that. That was real. That was done. That was done real nice. Second Blitz. Down. Blitz. There's a flag as Bettis broke a tackle and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Carlton Bailey was around his hips. Corey Miller, the outside linebacker, came up on the line of reason I hollered blitz and came underneath the blocking back, making the fullback bounce outside, make the Bettis go out wide. Penalty flag is against the New York Giants in the fourth quarter clock showing 414. Probably Corey Miller when he walked up on the line. Don't know that for sure, but somebody got up on the Offsides by the defense, number 57, lined up in the neutral zone. Corey Miller. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. You got it. What he was trying to do is blow up the inside run, make the inside run go all the way to the outside. Two marquee running backs today. Bettis right there. Number 27 moments ago was the very tired Rodney Hampton. They have been, been basically the stories today. Hampton with 112 first time. The Giants have had 100 yards in three games on the ground. And Bettis, boy, look at 24 carries, hard-earned yards between the tackles. He's been beat up. He said he didn't want to end his career real young. A couple more of these games. He's got knots all over his body for this one. First down for the Los Angeles Rams. And again, it's Bettis. And again, he moves a pile and picks up about four yards. Jarvis Williams has it. Spot. Uh, he, he found the cutback. Started off to his left, the defensive right. Good vision. He saw the cutback and cranked her back to the right. Now we wondered if Bettis would have a couple more carries in him as the clock was winding down to nurse this lead for the Rams. It looks like he does. 
Well, the Giants have to watch this clock. They can't. They not only have to stop them. They have to stop them with time remaining left. So this is a big down to see what happens here if the Giants, with three minutes, will go to a timeout. Giants have all three of their timeouts remaining. Second down, seven to go. Blitz, blitz. That is good defense. Keith Hamilton. Timeout, timeout. There they go. That's and what we're talking about. You gotta have time left, Kevin. You can't just have the ball. So they took a timeout with 3:23. Exactly what you have to do. They blitzed the safety, Kevin. He walked up, walked over on the weak side, and he blew the run up. 3:23 left. Timeouts are down to two apiece. Dan Reeve down by seven. 17 to 10. Football in Anaheim today. The Rams with a couple touchdown passes from Miller, leading 17 to 10. Giants defense has been the story of the second half. Their offense controlled a lot of the first half of play here in Anaheim. The Rams have tried to run out the clock here and nurse this lead. And the Giants are trying to get one more good defensive series in there. Maybe, just maybe, Jerry, give some time to the young quarterback, Dave Brown, to come back. Mass substitution, four wides and uh, the whole nickel, and they've been playing all man-to-man -man on this. That's why they have three people to the D, and the quarterback doesn't like it. They had three people to the right to beat the man-to-man. -man. They were going to pick somebody. It was that big of a play. Miller will go again to talk with Chuck Knox. Miller wisely called the timeout, Jerry, when he saw something on that giant defense he did not like. The four wide receivers, they put three to one side all close together. That usually means a rub off and a pick. And I believe the Giants, he saw the Giants check into a two deep zone so they wouldn't be man to man and there wouldn't be a pick. And Miller called a timeout. Now they're balanced up already. Now they got two to a side. The Giants now can stay man to man if that's what they want to play. 3.23 in the fourth quarter. Third and six from the shotgun. Chris Miller. They got him. Willie Beeman, his first flag. set. There's a flag. Beeman may have grabbed his mask. What a heartache. Boy. What? Play like that, chase the quarterback out there and let your hand slip up on the mask playing that hard. All the guy's doing is playing as hard as he can play. A lot of good things were going on when they were balanced red. The Giants were man to man. When the Rams motioned and put three to one side, the Giants with the motion checked the zone. And Personal that foul, got the quarterback. Face mask by the defense, number 21. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Oh, 15 or not a fiver. This will kill you. Let's see if this is a, a 15 -er or a fiver. He didn't let go. Oh, there he is. Uh, that's slow motion now. You got to remember, we're seeing it in slow motion. If we could see that at regular speed, we'd know how long he had that thing. It's hard to get a five-yarder. Everybody likes those 15-yarders. Absolutely decimating to the New York Giants. Again. All right, that happens at 317, Kevin. See how much time they keep the ball now, Kevin. With 317, you gave it back to him. You got to work your timeouts. Got two left, Kevin. They got a first down at the 37-yard line. You thinking Jerome Bettis? Have to. Have to run the heavy man. There's a blitz by the Giants. Here they come. And it is Bettis. Time out. Time out. Anybody. Please. There we go. Bettis to the 39 and a gain of two and a half. And Reeves trying to think of what he can do to stop the Rams. Time is running out. He's down by a touchdown. Wide second half for the Giant offense. It's been their defense which has kept them close. The Rams jumped off to a 14-3 lead. They now lead 17 to 10. Stay tuned for our mention for the Miller Lite player of the game. And there are a lot of players, including Jerome Bettis, that would snare that award. They have called on Bettis here late. He's approaching 30 carries, Jerry, on the day. That's what he said he didn't want to do, which kind of surprises most backs. He wanted as often as they can get it. Second down and eight. 
Safety's walking up. Oh, now that helps the Giants. Now, now that helps. That stops the clock. You got one timeout left. Whatever happens, if it's not a first down on third down, you get to call a timeout. You got a chance to come back and win this thing. They were getting in Miller's face on this pass. Good pressure after Miller. The defense the whole second half has played excellent. I believe that was uh, Michael Strahan. The German warrior, they called him, when he went to college. One year of high school football. Third down and eight. This would be a pretty good time to go to Johnny Bailey, one of the top third down receivers in the NFL. Oh, something wrong here. They got a wide out. Got a linebacker on a wide out. And it's caught for a first down, Jesse Hester, the ninth-year veteran from Florida State, and a big completion by Los Angeles. That's his first reception of the day, and good for 11 yards. This is a linebacker on a wideout, which made me think they had a bus. It must have been in a zone where all he had was a flat. You don't see that happen, but Miller is sprinting away from that bad matchup. They had Corey out there with a wideout, Corey Miller. Out of two and a half minutes in the clock ticking. Rams holding on to a seven-point lead. Big, big first down. Miller's had a pretty good day. Yes, he really has. Now they got two tights, two backs. That is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Coming in was Mike Strahan. Sitting with Strahan as we talked to him, he was the one person that said, this is a must win. We have to win this football game. Giants have lost two in a row. Under Dan Reeves, Jerry, they've never lost three in a row. And the Rams also have lost two consecutive games. Giants are out of timeouts now. The Rams find just one in their pocket. Go back to the, I guess the, the crucial play is uh, you've won on third down, you're going to get the ball, and you not only get a face mask, you get an automatic first down, and you get a 15-yarder rather than a 5-yarder. Well, we've got a break here. Let's go back to Hollywood in our NFL Fox Studios, and here's James Brown. Good game there, good game here. Dave Brown right now in his mind going through what he would do if he gets the ball. Question is now, will the Rams offense give it up? Got it second down and 12. Blitz, on the back off. Now here they come. Bettis. Jerome Bettis. For the 42. Clarence Jones, left tackle, former giant. Big block for the big fullback. Offensive line doing their job. And what makes a good back in a good team is running the ball when you have to, when you have to take it. Oh, he got his arms around. Clarence got, may have got away with a little hug up there. Bettis has been a difference against the Giants in the second half. Ram, 17 to 10. Los Angeles Rams, 17, the New York Giants, 10. Offense for the Giants, waiting to get the ball, but the question is, will they get it? Rodney Hampton, over 100 yards today rushing. No timeouts for the Giants' defense left. You have to blitz, you have to come after the Rams, and you have to pull the ball out. Your shot is to pull the ball out. Well, this may be the... Play right here. Third down and four to go. And at the 43 of the Giants, the Rams with the first down here at the two-minute warning. The Giants out of timeouts may wrap it up. Two tight ends and two backs on the third and longs. That tells you where they're going. Jerome Bettis. They get him down. They had... Jesse Campbell in there and Corey Miller who had an interception earlier in the game which was a big interception and now fourth down it looks like indeed the Giants will have time to get the ball back he'll be here running to this side and all the Giants are swarming and chasing now try to get the ball out Mike Fox had a hold him stunned him now the Rams have to take the clock is at 15 seconds and the time clock is 127 they got to run it down to one 
Snap on one. Give the Giants the fewest amount of snaps as they can give them. Four, three. Going to call timeout. Timeout at one. 114 on the big clock. So they let the play clock run down, and the game clock was right with it. We're down to 113 left. Los Angeles using their final timeout. Dan Reeves and the Giant offense begin to think about what they can do. And, Jerry, let's look ahead just a bit. What will they be able to do? They're probably going to come with the four wide receivers in the shotgun. That's the two-minute drill. They have to push the ball down the field. And these types of situations, what's made the Rams better on defense and more aggressive is the man the man getting after people. But with the ball's got a long ways to go. They'll come back and play zone. and They won't play man unless the Giants cross the 50-yard line. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time with the one-hour pregame show. Then except in New York and San Diego. In Chicago at Detroit or the Los Angeles Rams at the New Orleans Saints. The second half of our doubleheader features Dallas and Arizona, Atlanta at the Raiders, or Tampa at San Francisco. Check your local listings for the game and the time in your area. Rams have got to punt the ball and 113 left. Megan is stationed back at the 10. Punt blocks on. They got to go after Kevin. They got to try to block the punt. Eight people coming. Landetta, the former Giant, gets it away. It will go into the end zone. And from the 20, New York will have one minute and six seconds with which to work. 43-yard punt. Today's game was produced by Jeff Gowan and directed by Andy Kindle. The studio show was produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy and the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. Special thanks to Bo Garrett, Rich Russo, along with Pat McGrath and Jim Stamos. With Jerry Glanville, Kevin Harlan, a cast of thousands. And right now the Giants hoping they can make up something. They're down by seven. They've got 106 on the clock. And they begin at their 20. No timeouts. And the crowd's trying to make noise to help the Rams. The home team is trying to make some noise. There's just not enough people here. Brown. Intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Newman. Hang on the ball. Cover the ball with two hands. Anthony Newman with his first interception in two years. And the second interception thrown today by Dave Brown. And it appears as though the Giants will lose their third consecutive game for the first time under Dan Reeves. The safety will come over to help Todd Light as a double move, a hook and go. And Newman's all the way over. They got the big hand on his cast. I was worried about him running here. Just hang on that ball in this situation. They have not had success going deep to Sherrard today. Surprised on a first down play they would do that? They must have thought they were going to be in man-to-man -man rather than zone. When you make a double move, you're counting on people being aggressive and playing man-to-man -man and jumping a route with you. When he did the out and then tried to go, the double move, he thought he could get away. Right now, we'd like to take our audience to Texas Stadium. And the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles once the Los Angeles Rams eat up the clock. Chuck Knox said happiness for him is watching this play. His favorite play is the Rams kneeling down at the end of the game. Because it means a win? That's it. We said, what's your best moment in football? He says, watching my team kneel down with the ball. Chuck Knox says, that's what I love. Well, today they stop a two-game losing streak. They all push their record to three and four. As the battle between Chuck Knox and Dan Reeves has just written another chapter. And Jerome Bettis, our Miller Lite player of the game. 29 carries, big ones down the stretch. Worked that clock. And he gained just under 90 yards. In all fairness to the fans that came to the game, none of them left early. There weren't many here, but at least they stayed. Tough goal for Dan Reeves. Short work week. They lose on Monday night. They lost the week before to the New Orleans Saints and two old friends. Say so long for now. 
The final score from Anaheim, California. The Rams 17, the Giants 10. So now for Jerry Glanville, this is Kevin Harlan saying so long. Final again, 17-10. You've been watching Fox Sports coverage of the NFL. Now to Pat Summerall at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas.